everyone, welcome back, it's Jarvis. For this week's EDH deck deck, I have Enecthea Hand of Erebos. It's an Oops All Enchantments EDH deck. Uh, but before we get into it, I just want to remind you to please like, comment, and subscribe to the video. And you can also go and follow me on all my socials by following the link tree in the description of the video. The deck list will also be in the description of the video. So, Enecthea uh, Hand of Erebos is a 2 Abzan a legendary enchantment creature demigod. 4-4 with Menace. Other enchantment creatures you control have Menace. And when it enters the battlefield or attacks, exile up to one target non-aura enchantment card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 3-3 black zombie creature in addition to its other types. We are pairing Anakthea with a companion. I love companions, and I will go and play them in many decks. This companion, we're using Umori, the Collector. Two Golgari Golgari, Legendary Ooze. The restriction on Umori is that each non-land card in your starting deck has to share a card type with uh, every other card. So, because of this, all of our cards in our decks have to be enchantments. Then, when Umori enters the battlefield, you choose a card type, and spells of the chosen card uh, type cost one less. So, the first thing that we're going to try to do with this deck is make tokens, because that's what Anakthea wants to do. We have Arasta End of the Endless Web, that whenever your uh, opponent's cast instances or sorceries, you get spiders. Anointed Procession to double your tokens. Battle for Bredegard, which is a saga. Step one, you get a 1 1 white human warrior creature token. Step two, a 1 1 green elf warrior creature token. Then step three, any number of artifact and or creature tokens you control with different names, you get a token copy, a token that's a copy of it. Black Market Connections uh, has three modes. You can get a treasure, a card draw, or a token. Feldar Retreat has Landfall, where you get a 2-2 Cat Beast, or a plus one, plus one counter. Hollowed Haunting, probably the biggest hitter out of all the token makers. Uh, if you have seven or more enchantments, creatures control a Flying and Vigilance. But then whenever you cast an enchantment, you get a Spirit Cleric. That's power and toughness is equal to the number of spirits you control. Parallel Lives is the same reason that it has Anointed Procession. We're not playing double in season, most of these are the cost. Sandworm Conver Convergence stops creatures with flying from attacking you. Also, you get a Worm. Sigil of the Empty Throne, second most important to Hollowed Haunting. You get a 4-4 White Angel Creature whenever you cast an enchantment. Song of the World Soul populates your tokens so pick whatever token you have make a copy of it and you do that whenever you cast a spell and then we have constellation so not all these cards have constellation but they enchantment payoffs do make giant uh gives minus one minus one whenever an enchantment enters i don't want to blossoms draws you a card sit the service hand gains you a life and draws a card when you cast an enchantment boon of the spirit realm is a new card from Commander Masters, uh, that when it or another enchantment enters the battlefield, you get a blessing counter on it, and then it acts as an anthem that gives plus one, plus one for each blessing counter. Enchantress's Presence, cast, draw a card. And then we have to go into some self-mill, because we want to go and give Anakthea some stuff to reanimate. So we have a Mind Rack Harpy. At the beginning of your combat on your turn, each player mills three cards. Cemetery Tampering, it's a hideaway enchantment. In the beginning of your upkeep, you mill three cards, but if you control 20 or more cards, oh, I'm sorry, if you have 20 or more cards in your graveyard, you can play the exile card without paying its cost. Dead Rich Trant, when it enters, you mill 10, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, you choose a card at random in your graveyard, and if it's a creature, it goes straight to the battlefield, otherwise, into your hand. Binding of the Titans, also a saga. Step one, each player mills three cards. Step two, you can exile cards from opponents, oh, from any graveyard, and if it's a creature, you gain a life. And step three, you could go and return a creature card or a land card from a graveyard to your hand. Then we fall into the ramp, card draw, good stuff. Unlike most of my decks, uh, this is a pretty uh, the biggest part of my decks uh, deck for this one. The reason why is enchantments, they go and work so well together. They can lean more into good stuff than you would in another deck where the synergy really matters. Enchantments just synergize so well that it doesn't matter if you uh, go and pick the synergistic cards, because they're all synergistic. 
but we have abundance to go and control your card draws, whether you pick uh, land or non-land. Archetype of Endurance gives all your creatures hexproof. It makes it so your opponent's stuff can't have hexproof. After it's got a passage, when your creatures die, your opponent's uh, a target opponent can pay three life, or you get it back to your hand. This is many journeys, additional land on the first step, second step, gain three life, and then it transforms into a creature on the other side, but that's not why we're playing it. Finding the Old Gods is a removal spell for any permanent that's a non land. It ramps you with a forest card, and it gives all your creatures death touch. Boon of the Spirit Realm is in there again because it's really that important to the deck. Cacophony Unleashed, 5 and 2 black. When it, it's a new card. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, destroy all non enchantment creatures. Uh, when it or another uh, enchantment enters the battlefield, you can make it into a 6 6. Well, you, not that you can, you have to make it into a 6 6 with Medicine Death Touch. Course of Crucifix to go and play lands from the top of your library and gain a little life. Cutting Rhetoric uh, acts like a pillow fort effect because when they attack you, you can exile the top card of their library and you can play that card for as long as it remains exiled. Demon of Fate's Design. Once in each of your turn, you could go and play an enchantment spell using life instead of mana. Destiny Spinner makes your creatures and enchantments uh, uncounterable. Meaning if Destiny Spinner is out, your entire deck can't be countered. Dockside Chef uh, gives you a source of card draw because you sacrifice an artifact or creature. Also, get an enchantment creature in your graveyard that you want to go and reanimate. There's a great way to do it. Dreaded Losing Grove acts as ramp and mana fixing. Airbow's God of the Dead. I just like stopping my opponents from getting life. There's also card draw. Exploration, ramping. Fertile Brand, ground, an aura that ramps. Bloom Shrieker, regrows a uh, permanent to your hand. And if it dies, it gets exiled. Grasp of Fate acts as removal for each, uh, one permanent from each of your opponents. Greater Tanuki. Most of the time, you're going to channel this to go and get a to go and ramp. Hunting Grounds. Um, this one I really like uh, because whenever an uh, opponent casts a spell, as long as you have Threshold, which we should have most of the time, you can put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Jukai Naturalist uh, is a cost reducer. Karametra God of Harvest is a uh, ramp. Candler's Transformation is removal. He's a make, and it also draws you a card. Marari's Wake is an anthem, and it also ramps you. Nylea, God of the Hunt, uh, gives all your creatures trample. Next from Ancient, ramp, on ramp, on ramp. Omen of the Hunt, ramp. Phyrexian Arena, card draw. Rebel and Riches, an alternate win con. Uh... Whenever, opponent, uh, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you get a treasure. If you have 10 or more treasures, you win. Sanctum Weaver, the best ramp spell in the entire deck because you get to create add mana equal to the number of enchantments you control. Shigeki Jukai uh, Visionary, uh, it could go and ramp you. Then also, it could uh, go and regrowth all of your non-legendary permanents. Smothering Tie, ramp. And my goal is really with Anakthea to go and regrow Smothering, to go make a token company with Smothering Tide, then populate it, because I think that would be fantastic. Sphere of Safety, uh, ghostly prison or propaganda, but it's uh, the payment that they have to make is equal to the amount of enchantments you control. Spirit of Companion, the best doggo that draws you a card. Starfield of Nyx, turns all of your enchantments into creatures as long as you have five or more. So it gives you a gigantic battle, a uh, gigantic uh, army to do battle with. Also, you can re regrow an enchantment from your graveyard to the battlefield. Sylvan Library, card draw. Cruelty of Gix. We're probably always going to read ahead to Chapter 2 to go and Grim Tutor. And Chapter 3, get a creature card from any graveyard to the battlefield under your control. Otis Reborn. Uh, has opponents sacrifice creatures, makes opponents discard cards, and also gets a uh, creature from any graveyard onto your battlefield, or a Planeswalker in this case as well. Mihook Massacre. Probably the best enchantment board wipe that you can have. Touch the Spirit Realm, uh, removal, or you could flicker your own creature to go and stop it from being removed by channeling it. Weaver of Harmony is an anthem, plus you can go and copy uh, triggered abilities or activated abilities of your enchantments. Wild Growth is ramp. So, that's a deck.
Uh, a good portion, I would say probably between 65 and 70 percent of the deck is actually the pre-con. I just added the card, took out all the cards that weren't enchantments, added the enchantments that I liked, and went from there. Also, uh, there's 37 lands in this deck, uh, so you shouldn't have any problems in your land drops with 37 lands. Uh, it's a really good number for you to be at, especially with all the ramp that you have access to and the card draw you have to get to more lands. But what do you think of this deck tech? Do you like Amori as a companion? Would you just run it without Amori and be boring like everyone else? Let me know. But yet again, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next week, have a good one. See ya.